Hello, World Shelly here, and it's time for your Friday Foundation Fix, where you can get your fix of foundation reviews in between foundation fests. And today I'm checking out a new release from Revlon. It is the Photo Ready Candid Glow Foundation. Retails for $10.99 for 0.75 ounces. So if you're comparing prices ounce per ounce, this one's pushing 15 bucks. Comes in 16 different shades according to the materials but my CVS only has 12 shades available and there's only 12 shades available on CVS online. They claim that this is anti-pollution, antioxidant, and anti-blue light ingredients. No oils, no parabens, no phthalates, no synthetic dyes, no fragrances. A lotion texture that goes on like a moisturizer finishes like a lightweight liquid foundation. Infused with prickly pear oil for extra hydration. I can always use a little prickly pear in my life. That's about all they say here. So I have two shades. I've got, they, I believe, the two lightest shades. Yes, they are. I've got 110, which is porcelain cool, and I've got 130, which is ivory cool. So the lightest shades in the spectrum are appear to be both cool undertone. Now, I picked them out by my eyeballs in the store, and I picked them because they appeared to be cool undertone, so I'm glad to see that their assessment lines up. Let's take a look at these swatched against a few others in my collection. Alrighty, let's swatch. First up is today's foundation, the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Glow. I've got shade 110 as the first swatch. And the second swatch is also the Photo Ready Candid Glow in shade 130. Third swatch is the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish in shade 130. Fourth up, I've got the CYO Life Proof in shade 101. Fourth is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow in shade 201. And last, I've got the Maybelline Dream Urban Cover in shade 102 Fair Porcelain. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 45-year-old face. I like to cover up my sun damage. I have deeper smile lines, forehead lines, some texture between my eyebrows, some texture on the side of my face, and my pores do like to scream loud and proud, even though I've got dry skin. So my skin is not only dry, it does not produce oil, but it is also typically very easily dehydrated. So this sounds great that it has extra hydration. We'll see how the claims go. Uh, Revlon also introduced a new primer, Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing Makeup and Skincare primer. It's got a complex infused with vitamin B, B5 and hyaluronic acid. So I figured what the heck we will try this out as well because typically within the same brand I don't mind trying new products together because in theory they should work with each other. This looks kind of like a sort of a gel. Ooh, yeah it's a little thicker texture which Feels like it's nicely pore filling. Ooh. That scent is interesting. At first, it was just chemically. And now I think they're shooting for like apples or pears or something like that. It's not very strong, but I don't have a very sensitive nose. And for me to notice it means it's a little bit stronger than usual. This has a nice grip to it. I'm liking how this is like gripping down. You know me, I like me a grippy primer. Ooh, yeah, I don't like how it smells though. Not cool. I will go in on one side of my face with a sponge. This is a dampened Real Techniques Miracle Complexion sponge. On the other side, I will use my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. We will see if there is a preference one way or the other. I decided to go with shade 110, the lighter shade. Might be a smidge too light for me, but I think this is blending out nicely. Very light coverage with the sponge. I'm getting a little bit of cancellation of redness. I can see all of my sunspots still really not. It's kind of just improving the overall look of my skin with a slightly glowy look to it. It's, it's a nice finish, but it's not really working for coverage. Let's see what the brush side does. Coverage is about the same with the brush, blends out equally easily. I think the nice thing about this being that sort of liquid texture is that it's really not clinging to any of my texture. It is, you know, gliding over the skin nicely. It's really not doing 
too much at all for coverage though. It has canceled a little redness, but like I can still tell my nose is more red than the rest of my face. My chin is more red than the rest of my face. So I'm not sure when they say light coverage liquid foundation, they are not kidding. There is not a lot of coverage going on. I'm gonna try to build it up just the tiniest bit. And I think just for the heck of it, I'm gonna use shade 130 just to, you know, I only have a tiny bit left on my palette here. And let's just see, let's do one pump of 130 and see if we can, I don't know, just get a little bit of coverage. Okay, I think I was able to build it up to what I would call like a highlight coverage. I got some coverage of my sunspots. The, the lightest ones are pretty well covered. The darkest ones are still showing through. I really like the finish of this. It really is a your skin but better kind of a thing. It's not going to work miracles in terms of coverage, but I think pores look very... Very nice, mostly minimized. I'm having minor, minor, minor settling into a couple pores, and I think I'm having pretty good luck tapping that out. With fingertip application, it did start to cling a little bit to the dry skin around my nostrils, but it's a miracle when foundation doesn't do that. I think this looks really nice. It just looks like uh, an improved version of my skin, which is... That's all right. Where's my phone? Let's check the time. It is 9.09 a.m. When's the last time you saw me up this bright and early? I will be back with the rest of my face on. Okay, simple makeup today. I have to say I'm a little disappointed. As this sort of dried down, it got more dry looking. And for something that specifically has glow in the name and how pretty the finish started out, I was expecting it to stay pretty. Now... It also stayed pretty tacky, so I did end up setting it with the CoverGirl True Blend Mineral Powder, the translucent one, and didn't really change anything about the finish. It didn't make it more dry or anything. It took to setting pretty well, but it doesn't have the same finish it did when I first applied it. It still looks pretty at a distance, I think, but it looks a little more clingy to dry skin, and that kind of disappointed me. I also had... Where did I put it? The concealer, the new concealer, the Candid Concealer. I literally just used it. How can it not be in front of me? Here we go. I have shade 005, which was the lightest shade in stock, shade Fair, that I could get with that number. I would guess that they might be releasing even more lighter shades. I did not find this to be a super light. I think it was more like a skin tone match. It claims to be medium coverage. I don't think it's quite medium coverage. It's pretty light coverage in, on me. I can still see my dark circles coming through and it is settling into the fine lines under my eyes. So, so far I'm not having a great impression of the concealer. We will see, I tapped it out. We'll see if it survives and continues to do that or not. On the rest of my face, I did not have any trouble blending. I am wearing the Makeup Revolution Ultra Bronze. I've got the e.l.f. Uh, primer infused blush in always rosy. I started out with the Revlon Skin Lights highlighter and this swatches beautifully on the fingertips. I'm also wearing it on the lids of my eyes, but it really doesn't pick up on a brush very well. So I really wasn't getting much payoff from that. So I went in with the e.l.f. highlights that I will never know the name of it because they don't label their products. So I can't remember what the name of it was. And on my eyes, I just have some NYX. This is actually blush. It's the shade that I use for contour and it makes a great crease color on a quick eye day, the shade Taupe. And that is what I have in the crease of my eyes. My mascara is CoverGirl Exhibitionist. And on my lips, I just have a little bit of the Laneige Lip Glowy Balm. That is where we're starting out. I hope this sort of melts into my skin a bit more so that it looks less dry and a little bit more glowy like they claim because that would be nice. I feel like it just looks a little bit dry right now. Otherwise, that's where we are. Check-in time's 9, 10 a.m. I will be back with a daylight check-in in a bit and I'll come back tonight, give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, it's been about six hours and everything feels nice so far. Coverage is very, very light, I think, you know. Look at all those sunspots, but I think the mix of color ended up being okay. And let's see, maybe you guys can see up close. There's a squirrel barking at me in the background. 
So here's where we are at six hours. I will be back tonight and give you guys my final thoughts. 7.18 p.m. That puts us just at the nine hour mark. Let us take a look at how the photo ready candid glow from Revlon held up. First, let's talk how it feels, how it wears. It's very comfortable, it's very lightweight. I think it is slightly hydrating. It did keep up very well with my very easily dehydrated skin, even with cold winter temperatures outside. So I think if you have dry skin, it is A-OK -okay to go ahead and try this one. In terms of how it wore, let's zoom in and take a look. I feel like there's a lot of bare skin on my face visible right now. My chin is pretty much down to bare skin. My upper lip is pretty much bare skin around my nose, especially around my nostrils, but really most of my nose is bare skin. I feel like my blush bronzer highlight have remained a little bit intact, so at least having product on top of the foundation kept it hanging around a little bit, but up to my forehead, I just feel like there's a lot of bare skin there too. On the upside, it does not seem like it is especially clinging to texture. It does emphasize flaky skin just a little bit, but it's not doing any major clinging and it's not doing any major settling into lines. It did settle into my deepest chin line, but otherwise I would say it's not too bad, but there's also not much left. I do think it degrades gracefully in the sense that there's not a whole bunch of like gunky, cakey, nasty makeup all over my face. It's just kind of disappearing. So at least it does fade gracefully. I would not normally expect this much fade at the nine hour mark, so it's not very long wearing at all. Let's give a second of consideration to the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Concealer. It's pretty much gone under my eyes. The purple is screaming. And any product that's left is caked up into my fine lines. So I would say pass on the concealer. I did not like it to begin with and I still don't like it. I would not recommend it, generally speaking. The foundation, I think if you've got dry skin, it's okay. I think if you have maturing skin, it's, it's definitely worth trying. The short wear time, the not a fantastic shade range. The fact that the finish isn't glowy as expected. It went on looking nice and glowy and as it dried down, it just kind of lost that glow. So it's not really, it's not what I expected. The other thing that kind of bothers me about it is when you compare this to the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish, the first one that came out in this line, that one's got way more coverage, way more longevity. The satin beautiful finish lasts all day. It, it doesn't dry down and lose its beautiful sort of finish. So it's, I almost feel like this one's just trying to ride the coattails of the success of that one, if that makes any sense. You know, sometimes I think products get named in a line and they don't necessarily relate to the other products in the line. So. I, I fear that that's what's going on with this one. Now, that said, I will try this foundation again without the Revlon primer. I did enjoy this primer, but I do want to make sure that the primer was not impacting in a negative way the performance of the foundation. I did, I liked this going on. I really enjoyed it. So I will give it a try. If I had to give a grade to the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Glow, I'm going to go a low B minus. I think it's wearable. I think it, it passes the check marks for dry skin and mature skin. I, it's just not quite what I was expecting and it didn't perform as well as I hoped. So that is where we're at. We're going to go B minus. There you have it. Another Friday foundation fixes in the books. Let me know which foundations you would like to see next. I've bought a ton of them, especially drugstore. Still have some high end ones to get to. There's a lot coming. We will have lots of foundation reviews in your future. Dun, dun, dun. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.